people get surprised when I say this, but I am actually on the, the autism spectrum. A lot of people find that surprising because uh, I do stand-up comedy for a job. It's not helpful for doing this job, by the way, having a social communication disorder. It's like being an epileptic who works on the walkers. It's no fucking help to this, <laughs> this job at all. But what I struggle with is a one-on-one -on -one conversations. I do fine here because I've got a microphone. I've rehearsed this. I kind of know what I'm saying. But one-on-one -on -one conversation, I'm so shit at that, which is a problem in my last job. Because uh, I worked in an office. I don't know if anyone's found that. If you work in an office, other people have to work there as well. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> really got to put a stop to that. Uh, I hate it, like, you know, when you work in an office, everybody thinks they're funny. Everybody's got like office banter. I hated that. On the, my last Monday into the office, I wore a t shirt that said, Weekend was fine, thanks. Just a quiet one. Just to shut cunts up. Yeah. <laughs> No comment. No, I think when you're coming at 9 01 and some smart arse will say, Good afternoon, nice of you to join us. And you're like, Fuck off, Mike, that's why your wife left you. Yeah. <laughs> Stop bringing cakes in. Nobody's impressed, Mike. Yeah. But I, I just struggle with conversations with people, even if it's like a, a no, you're with a friend and you've not seen a friend for a while, and your friend will say to you, How are you? And you're supposed to say, I'm okay, what about you? I never do that, because I'm a rude arsehole. I'm never interested in any of those conversations. I often, like, forget, and I'll remember, like, on the bus home after meeting my best pal, I'll, say, I'll text him, I'll say, sorry, mate, never asked how you're getting on, <laughs> and spoke about wrestling for an hour. Uh, <laughs> did they ever find your gran in the end? You know, even if... <laughs> Even if serious shit's going on, I just don't care. I have to say things to my wife, like, oh, I didn't know you had a sister. A real horrible, horrible person, right? But what I've done over the years to insulate myself, to so come across as an arsehole, is I like to practice conversations in advance. As I used to do as a kid as well. I used to practice, like, normal kid conversations. Like, on a school bus home, when I get home, I'm going to tell mum that I don't want potato waffles anymore because they're weird chips. Uh, <laughs> when I go and see my Uncle Jimmy later on, I'm going to tell him I don't think it's necessary for me to take my top off when we play Nintendo. Like, normal... <laughs> Normal kid coming, we've all been there, right, cool. Right, so what happened is I was going home from a gig a few weeks ago and I had a new idea for a tattoo. I've got like, lots of tattoos under here and I like to draw them and design them myself. So what I decided to do was have a fake practice conversation with my wife about getting this new tattoo because uh, she has all the money, basically. <laughs> so I was sitting in the car and traffic lights looking like a maniac, speaking to myself out loud. I started to tell my wife about this new tattoo, what it was going to look like, how much it was going to cost, where my body was going to get it. And out loud, in my head, my wife started to disagree with my desire for a new tattoo. It's like, Ross, you've got enough tattoos. They're far too much money. You're 37 now. It's not happening. And I started shouting out loud like a maniac. Uh, how dare you speak to me like that? I'm a grown man. I'll get as many tattoos as I want. Thanks very much. And I went home and had the actual conversation with my actual wife. And it didn't go to my stupid plan because in real life, my wife is amazing. She's a sweetheart. She says, Ross, tattoos are clearly important to you. That makes them important to me. We'll find you the money. You're getting this tattoo. And I walked away in a huff. <laughs> because the conversation didn't go to my stupid plan, did it? She's shouting after me, what have I done wrong now? And I was like, that's not what you fucking said in the car on the way here. <laughs> <laughs>